What up, Sackers? Big Sack McGee here. How are you doing today? It is Saturday, March 7th, and uh, I'm going to do something just a little bit different today. Um, no silver or gold to discuss. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about how I'm personally preparing for dealing with uh, the coronavirus. And I'm not talking about specifically what happens if I get sick or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not in the demographic that is probably going to be very harmed if I get the virus, according to the research that I've done. But I want to just talk about how I'm going to deal with keeping life as normal as possible in this uh, kind of hysteria that's starting to set in the world and you know as you see grocery shelves kind of uh, going bare and all that kind of stuff and you know the general population that never ever thinks about preparing or prepping in any kind of way um, are all of a sudden very nervous and and so I just want to talk about what I have done personally in my life and what I'm going to continue to do here in the coming weeks um, first question though is am I still going to continue to stack silver and gold and the answer is yes um, a lot of it depends upon specific availability at the prices that I'm willing to pay. As of right now, yes. In fact, I have some more on the way, um, but maybe in slightly smaller quantities than I would normally because another thing that I like to stack is cash. Um, I always have cash on hand. Um, and, uh, you know, enough so that I can be able to pay my bills for a few months if I need to. Um, and by bills, I mean buying more food, buying more things. Uh, I don't have any kind of debt to speak of, so I'm not making payments on anything. But I do like to have cash on hand, especially because when I go to, uh, you know, the, the coin store or pawn shops or wherever, I like to be able to have dry powder, as they call it, to be able to grab deals when I find them. But um, every month I stack a little bit more cash and um, rotate that into the various things that I purchase. Um, the next obvious thing to talk about is food. Um, I am not, I would not consider myself a full on prepper. Um, I don't have 20 years worth of food <laughs> um, vacuum sealed and uh, in mylar bags and things like that. But I do have what I would consider to be a pretty substantial supply Um most of the food that our family eats is, you know, cooked fresh, and we do several trips to the store, you know, every every uh, few days to to buy those things. But we have uh, two different freezers filled with uh, meats and meals and things like that that we like to eat. We do rotate through the stock, of course, as we, uh, you know, um, use them. My kids love to have pizza. We probably have twenty five of them sitting in the in the freezer, and when we buy new ones, we put them on the bottom, rotate through the top. Same thing with our meat. Um, sometimes we like to buy, you know, a quarter a cow or something like that and have it, you know, after it's been butchered and we'll write the dates on there and try to rotate through that stock as well. So we have plenty of, uh, frozen meat, uh, if, you know, for that. Um, but one thing that I've done recently is I have purchased more canned goods, um, especially the kids sometimes like to have for lunch, you know, especially on the weekend or whatever stuff that's easy to make. They can open it and microwave it themselves. Um, so I like to stack and basically have a stock on, you know, demand of canned goods that are meals ready to eat, so to speak, you know, things like beef stew, uh, chili, um, soups, and, uh, even SpaghettiOs, which I personally find absolutely disgusting, but, uh, my children love them. Um, so we, we buy, um, I at least have uh, almost always at least two cases of each of those on hand and we rotate the stock as well. Um, it's just a real easy way of having food that you already eat and just having more of it that's not in threat of going bad anytime in the next couple months. Um, so I, I, in the last week or two, have increased the amount that we have, but it's stuff we eat anyway, okay? Um, something that is a little bit different is when the the coronavirus was first kind of coming out about five or six weeks ago and I started getting in the news, I thought, you know what? I've always wanted to have some survival food that lasts longer. And so what I ended up going with, instead of just, you know, buying MREs or things like that, I've purchased a, a good deal of freeze-dried foods from Mountain House, which is the brand that uh, you see in a lot of um, outdoor places, you know, if you're going camping and things like that. Um, and I got my supply from Costco, 
they sell these big canisters of this stuff. And um, my um, familiarity with it comes simply from when we went camping and we bought some freeze-dried foods before and thought, you know what, hey, that's not bad. And, uh, you know, it has a shelf life of 20 years. And they come in these, it looks like an old-school coffee can. But um, it's freeze-dried, and you simply add boiling water and wait, and it's ready to go. So we purchased some things like um, freeze-dried, it's like an egg bake. You know, it's got... um, eggs and sausage and some uh, veggies and you just simply re- rehydrate and it's ready to go. It's not always the, you know, it doesn't taste like at all, like you're eating fresh eggs, but it doesn't taste bad, you know? And of course, if you have a supply of hot sauce or, or spices to put on, it's, it's very palatable. So I bought a good deal of that. Um, also um, some chili mac and beef stew and chicken stew and some uh, granola slash oatmeal kind of stuff that's freeze dried. So we have about if 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 we my family lived on nothing but freeze dried food uh, that we have, we probably have enough for about thirty days, which is not a ton. But combined with all the other stock that we have, um, I, we probably have enough food. If we had to only eat the food that we have in our house, I bet you we could probably go six months. That's my that's my guess. Um, is that enough? Well, I, I sure think it is. Um, but, you know, like I said, I'm not a full-on prepper where I'm worried about the grid going down or something like that. Um, so it's it's a good enough amount that I feel very comfortable right now, let's put it that way. In addition to that, um, you know, my wife and I have always had dried grains on hand, beans and rice and things like that, um, some of which we have not rotated, so I don't know how good it is. It's, you know, five, six years old. Um, you know, so we have some 50-pound bags. In a pinch, I have a feeling we'd be very glad that we have it. But, you know, what do you do with stuff like that? You have to be able to um, to have it and, be, and actually eat it, you know. So um, I've got a good store of, like, soup bouillon and spices and hot sauces and salt and honey and things like that that don't go bad um, to be able to use if we ever need that. I'm, I'm kind of a hot sauce fanatic anyway. I love the really hot stuff, but um, we got plenty of... Um, hot sauces and spices to last for quite a long time. Um, We also have water. Um, We usually have about 10 gallons on hand that we actually use. And I just like to keep replenishing that supply. Um, Do I have any survival gear? Yep, we got a a few life straws. You know, we have one for each member of the family if we were to need to. If you needed to drink unclean water, you can sip through the life straw, Um, you know, um, it's just something that doesn't cost very much, but if you needed it, you'd be very glad you have it. And when we go camping, we tend to bring that kind of stuff too. Um, but and also this, and, and I should say this too, the only thing I've done differently since the coronavirus started was I had bought the freeze dried food and I've increased the stock of the canned goods that we have. So all of the other stuff that I've just mentioned that we have a whole bunch of is just, we've had that on hand already. Um, there's other things that, um, I tend to stack generally uh, that don't go bad, like stuff like paper supplies. Like I'm not in any danger of running out, and it's not because I just ran down to Target and bought 18 things of toilet paper and stuff. But I do have quite a bit of things that we already use, and uh, that I just re- replenish the supply. You know, I never have to run down to the store because we ran out of toilet paper. We we, we kind of have a, a habit of just picking up stuff and rotating our stock. And uh, not that you need to rotate toilet paper, but just I just know that we always have it because I don't like to run out, put it that way. And it has nothing to do with prepping. It's just a little bit about being efficient, I guess. Um, same thing with toiletries, the shampoos and the toothpaste that we like to use. We we have quite a bit of all of that kind of stuff, things that you, you need for that. Um, but what other things do I stack? I like to stack things that I need anyway but that don't go bad, and especially things that we need anyway that don't go bad and happen to retain value. So one of the things I like to stack is ammo. Um, I've got a lot of ammo <laughs> for lots of different calibers of uh, guns that I have. Um, and that stuff doesn't go bad, and it does indeed retain its value. So in a pinch, could you trade ammo for food? I bet you could if you needed to. I don't think it's ever going to come to that. That's my personal opinion. But um, ammo is just the kind of thing that is always good to have, in my opinion. Um, another thing I like to uh, that we need anyway that doesn't go bad and retains value, liquor. Um, I'm not a huge drinker, but we use it and it's also something that just doesn't go bad. So not a bad thing to have on hand in my opinion, but 
that's um, having a good supply of all those things is basically what we've always done. Um, how am I going to, what am I going to do differently now? Um, like I'm going to spend some time today organizing our stuff. I'm going to probably try to come up with a list of how much we have of everything. And so that I can kind of keep an eye on that. And um, if we need to buy more of anything that seemingly might not be on a store shelf, I'm going to spend some time talking with my wife and discussing that today. Um, am I worried about the coronavirus? Not personally. Um, none, no one in my immediate family is on the, the demographic that is would be seriously harmed. You know, we've all been sick at one point or another and laid up in bed and it's awful and it's not fun. But I, th- I, I think that's how it will probably affect my family if we happen to catch it. The, my biggest concern is making sure that my um, – the way that I live my life and have, you know, having food on hand and feeling comfortable, we just want to make sure that that continues. So instead of running out in a panic to a store, I want to just make sure that I have what I need. So um, the the thing that's brought me the most comfort, believe it or not, is buying that freeze-dried food and just knowing that it lasts for 20 years. Um, when we got it, my family opened one up just so we could eat it anyway, just so we could kind of know what to expect. And it was, it was not bad. So um, that's where I'm at. Um, like I said, I'm still going to continue to stack as in a reasonable fashion, but uh, all the other areas that could be a concern I'd like to address. So that's where I'm at. Feel free to leave some comments on uh, other ways that you are preparing for dealing with the world of as we deal with the coronavirus. Um, there's a lot of panicked people out there, and uh, I'm like I said, I'm not personally one of them. I just like to be prepared. So that's it. That's all I got for you today. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, Like I said, leave a comment, slap a like on there if you enjoyed it, and we'll be back at you real soon. Take care.